Imagine you are in the heart of the dense forest with your buddy, two seasoned hunters, on the trail of a magnificent buck. The evening is starting to descend, beginning to cast those flowing shadows among the trees, when your search leads you to a clearing, where you guys stumble upon a chilling sight. The lifeless body of a child lying on the ground before you. On Labor Day, September 5th, the 12-year-old Cora Jones was riding her bike on Sanders Road near her grandma's house in Dayton Township. The killer got Cora into his car and molested her. He then drove 75 miles north up to Land Lake County near Kempster. Five or six hours later, he finally decided to end it. He strangled and stabbed her and threw her body into a steep ditch. Those two hunters found her, the body, the 12 year old girl, Cora, out in a ditch on that country road. Almost autumn, it was September 10th, 1994, in an area known as the Gateway to Wisconsin's North Woods. She was naked and bound. She'd been beaten, raped, strangled, and stabbed in the abdominal area in her chest. She'd been laying there for five days. The killer left a clue though, a small, minute speck of evidence that would later be used against him. David Spanbauer was born January 1941 into a German Catholic family consisting of his dad Frank and mom Evelyn. He was the oldest of three children. He had two younger sisters, Judy and Mary. David had a tough relationship with his father, who passed away when David was 14. Throughout his teenage years, he was in trouble with the law. He attended high school in Oshkosh and dropped out after his 17th birthday and joined the Navy. He didn't do any better in the Navy than he did at home. He received three court martials for being absent without leave and spent seven months in the brig. Naval doctors thought David needed psychiatric care and sent letter to his mother, but nothing was ever done about this. He was dishonorably discharged in 1959 and returned to Wisconsin in November. After he returned, he tried to go back to the Oshkosh High School, but soon dropped out again. His psychological problem led him to committing his first crime. On January 3rd, 1960, he broke into a home in Appleton. He stole two diamond rings, a hunting knife, bottle of booze, cash, and a 22 handgun. One night later, he robbed another house in Nina with his 22 pistol he'd stolen the night before, but while trying to rape the 13-year-old resident, he was almost caught while she was screaming. Well, he ran off and drove to Green Bay. Then, on the evening of January 12, 1960, Carol Grady, a 16-year-old girl who was babysitting her cousins, she was playing the piano whilst Spanbauer lurked outside the house. Watching her through the window was not good enough, so armed with his pistol, he entered the house, stole a small amount of cash, and then brought the teenager to a bedroom. Spanbauer forced her down on the bed, knifed off her clothes, and brutally sexually assaulted her. Carol's uncle got home while this was going on. Spanbauer shot him in the face while escaping fleeing the scene. Ever since his first burglary, when he procured that handgun, he traveled around southeast Wisconsin for about a half. There is a record of an attempted robbery near Milwaukee, and finally picked him up for carrying a concealed firearm in Sheboygan County on February 16th. After court and all was said and done, he was sentenced to 70 years. Thank God, right? Well, he was released in May of 1972. 
After his release, he relocated to Madison, where he attended classes at MATC, or Madison Area Technical College. He maintained a B average even, but this good student, good guy facade will not last long. He let a buddy borrow his car who happened to be a fugitive and committed a robbery with his car. Spanbauer got lucky with that close call. Summer of 72, Spanbauer took a job working city parks and beaches in Madison, which, with all the pretty college girls flocking to the beaches to hang out, his sexual frustration was growing. He told a psychiatrist about these urges and frustrations, to which the doctor responded with, You must have been born retarded. His screaming out for help was not heard, and nothing was ever done to help David. On August 16, 1972, Spanbauer was arrested in Dane County for abduction and rape of a hitchhiker. Then in May of 73, Spanbauer was sentenced to revocation of his parole, thereby sending him back to prison on his original charge. He also receives a new sentence of 18 years in prison on the new charges, but the judge allows the sentence to be served concurrent to his Brown County sentence. He's released in 1991 and... His reign of terror really begins. Twenty-year-old Laura DePise lived in Winnicani. She worked at the Fox River Mall in Grand Chute, and when she finished work on August 19th of 1992, she was supposed to go over and visit her friends in Menasha, but she never showed up. Her friends did find her locked car in their apartment parking lot, though. Spanbauer just started his summer vacation the day before. Coincidence? Hmm. Don't know. She's still missing to this day. I mean, you visualize, you know, your daughter carefree and happy one minute, and the next minute she's either duped or, or chloroformed or, you know, out of her control, and, and somebody's taking advantage of her and hurting her, and such a frustrating feeling because what can you do to help, you know? Nothing. We investigate or we get missing persons calls sporadically throughout the year. And almost all of them are located within a day or so. It amazes me the the stories that you hear about people that disappear and there's always something found right away afterwards you know or there's evidence or something and it's like why isn't there anything in Lori's case why is it just a blank slate you know it's like what happened? I mean there really is limited physical evidence um, really limited anything tangible, you know, the lack of the video, the lack of any, you know, cell phones or, or electronic type stuff. Um, but it comes down to the old, I mean, somebody knows. You know, somebody knows something, somebody was there, somebody saw something, somebody heard something. And any little bit of information, you know, somebody might think it's insignificant and it's just not that big of a deal. Uh, it may be that little piece of the puzzle that we need. I mean, with all the DNA and stuff, apparently there wasn't even substantial prints or anything. Her cup was there and her car was there and she's gone. He's still a potential suspect in this. Uh, I know that he did provide information uh, about the incident, some specific information. Investigators did follow up on that, uh, even at one point leading uh, to a, a potential dig uh, in another part of the state, but really nothing, nothing further than that has come, nothing that uh, has been able to really um, conclusively state that he is our guy 
and nothing to conclusively state that, nah, he's totally out. Well, it's like never finishing the book, you know. Um, I don't know. You, you just always have questions about, you know, what did happen and where and why and I, I don't really expect that I'll ever really find any answers, but uh, I mean, I think about Lori all the time, so you know, August 19th is just a day. Then, another girl disappeared. Her bicycle was found near her home in Ripon, Wisconsin on August 23rd of 92. Six weeks later, she was found dead about 100 miles away in a cornfield ditch near Tower Hill State Park, not far from the Wisconsin River. Her name was Ronnell Eichstead. She was 10 years old. David Spanbauer raped and killed her. He used his 88 four-door eagle to transport her body. He then sold that and later bought a maroon 91 Pontiac Bonneville. Almost two years later, on the 4th of July of 1994, Miriam Staria, aged 24, was riding her bike on a country road near Hartman Creek State Park when a maroon Pontiac hit her bike hard enough for her to crash. Spanbauer got out of his car. He said he was only trying to scare her while he held a pistol. With another car coming down the road and slowing down, Spanbauer got back in his car and drove away. On July 9th, less than a week after he attacked Staria, Spanbauer broke into a home in Appleton armed with a handgun, thought nobody was home, but he found 21-year-old Trudy Jeschke in a bedroom and fired one shot into her chest. She would have been a witness. She died from the bullet wound, and he later ditched the gun at Menominee Park in Oshkosh. You know, Spanbauer was on a roll in the summer and autumn of 1994. It was his longest stint of freedom he ever tasted since being 19 years old. It was overwhelming and very exciting for him. He exploited it. For him, he was having a blast. Robbery, rape, murder were addicting and a shit ton of fun if he didn't get caught. It was the abductions and murders of Eichstätt and Jones, though, that shocked northeastern Wisconsin communities and launched one of the area's most intensive police investigations. The investigation into the Eichstätt abduction and murder had gone cold at the time 12-year-old Cora Jones's bike was found lying in the middle of Sanders Road in the Wapaka County town of Dayton on Labor Day 1994. A massive search began the next day that involved hundreds of volunteers combing an area within a 10-mile radius of the missing girl's bike. The search for Jones garnered national attention after the FBI joined in the case, and a rural Wapaka church was quickly turned into a search center. Jones's body was found five days later in Land Lake County. An investigation continued while a series of seemingly unconnected crimes were going on in the Appleton area, including two home invasion sexual assaults in Appleton, in which a 15-year-old girl and a 31-year-old woman were victimized. And then, on November 14, 1994, a combined locks man saw a man trying to break into his house. He chased the man down and tackled him. The suspect, Spanbauer, was booked into jail on burglary charges and quickly became a suspect in the murders. Four days later, Spanbauer confessed to the murders of Jones, Eckstead, and Jeschke, as well as the sexual assaults and assorted burglaries. He also confessed to the attempted abduction of the woman near Hartman's Creek State Park. Spanbauer called pure evil at his sentencing and Outagami County Circuit Judge James Bayorgen never expressed remorse for his crimes. He was sentenced December 20th, 1994 to three life terms in prison without parole plus an additional 403 years. He died in prison on July 29th, 2002. I thank you for watching. <laughs>